Welcome to today's special clinical educational webinar hosted by AMBU. My name is Jason Cronwell and I'm the Senior Market Manager for AMBU's A-Scope family of single-use bronchoscopes. AMBU is acutely aware of the ongoing challenges with the COVID-19 pandemic and is excited to bring this continuing education webinar to you this evening. Tonight's webinar is the last installment of a four-part live educational series covering topics related to bronchoscopy during COVID-19. In this series, experts from various disciplines are sharing their real-world clinical experiences performing bronchoscopy during the pandemic, providing perspectives on the latest society guidelines and statements and offering suggestions on how to continue performing bronchoscopy while maintaining a safe work environment. In tonight's program titled Health Economics, Comparing the Costs of Reusables versus Single-Use Bronchoscopes, our presenter will help us understand the true cost of reusable bronchoscopes by reviewing all of the cost drivers, not just the scopes, but also reprocessing, repairs, and treating infections resulting from cross-contamination. He will also make the case for moving to single-use bronchoscopy because it not only reduces the risk of patient safety, but also saves money and reduces financial risk in this time of economic uncertainty. I would now like to transition to our continuing education program and introduce our presenter. Before we get started, Allow me to orient you to the functionality of the Zoom webinar system that we're using. During the presentation, all phone lines are automatically muted. If you have a question for our speaker, please feel free to post questions via the Q&A function, which is located on the bottom center of your screen. Our guest speaker will answer as many questions as time permits. Today's program will be recorded and made available on our website. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce our expert speaker for today's webinar. Ross, Russ Montgomery is the Director of Health Economics and Market Access at AMBU, Inc. Russ earned his doctorate degree in health services research and policy from the Johns Hopkins University Bloomberg School of Public Health, where he did outcomes research in the academic setting. He also holds a Master's of Health Science and Health Policy from Johns Hopkins and a Bachelor of Arts degree in Political Science from Hendricks College. Russ leads a team of health economists and market access specialists working to demonstrate the value of single-use endoscopy through research, analysis, tool development, and strategic engagement. He came to AMBU from the consulting world, working with more than 10 different device and pharma companies on all things health economics and market access. Russ also spent a number of years working in in, on the public payer side, working for CMS and state Medicaid programs to design and implement innovative payment programs and evaluate new technologies. He also had a stint with a nonprofit think tank doing health technology assessments for use by payers in the US and globally. It's now my pleasure to turn the program over to Russ to discuss tonight's important topic. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate that introduction and good evening, everyone. All right. Uh, before I jump into the presentation, I want to orient you to this topic and highlight the, uh, the specific uh, items I'm going to present this evening. So uh, this presentation is about comparing the costs of reusable bronchoscopes to single-use bronchoscopes. And I want to start off by looking at the cost drivers in bronchoscopy. What are those categories of cost that you have to consider when thinking about the cost, the total costs of bronchoscopy? I'll then transition into a set of slides walking through the true cost of reusable bronchoscopes. So what is the, the average cost and all of those different cost drivers for reusable bronchoscopes? I'll then compare that to the cost of single-use bronchoscopes. And then as part of that, uh, highlights the, the value of single-use bronchoscopes. So based on that cost comparison, uh, based on this current environment we're in uh, with COVID-19, uh, what is the value of single-use bronchoscopy? And as, as uh, Jason uh, indicated, we'll have a Q&A session uh, at the, the end of the presentation. Please feel free to enter your questions in the Q&A box. And uh, my colleague, uh, David Hoffman, will answer some of those along the way. Uh, and then I will answer the rest of those uh, during the Q&A session. All right. So what are the cost drivers in bronchoscopy? It's helpful to think about the cost drivers in terms of categories of cost. Uh, you see them there on the left side of your screen. Equipment costs, reprocessing, repairs, and cross-contamination. Now let's break this down into which of these cost drivers applies to reusables and which apply to single-use bronchoscopes. 
So equipment uh, costs obviously apply to both reusables and single use. Uh, we're talking about the bronchoscopes themselves, the video towers or monitors that go along with the scopes. Uh, on the reusable side, uh, these bronchoscopes are capital expenses. Uh, they're purchased uh, at a, a fairly significant cost, which we'll, uh, we'll look at some of those costs a bit later, and, uh, and then used for several years by the hospital. And as such, they're a capital investment. Uh, the towers that are used along with the, the scopes are also, also capital and, uh, expenses. On the single-use side, uh, the bronchoscopes are supply expenses. So like any other supply that's used in the healthcare setting, it's taken out of the package, it's used in a patient or during a procedure, and then it's discarded. And so uh, it's really a different category of, of cost than reusable bronchoscopes on the equipment side. Uh, there are some capital expenses for single-use bronchoscopes. So the monitors that are used uh, will, will be considered capital, but by and large, single-use bronchoscopy, uh, we're, more, we're thinking more about supply costs than capital costs. And then for these other categories, reprocessing, repairs, and cross-contamination, these only apply to reusable bronchoscopes. Uh, reusable bronchoscopes uh, have to be reprocessed after each use to decontaminate them, to get them ready for use in the next patient. Uh, and because of uh, the five-year lifespan or so of these uh, reusable bronchoscopes, because they're used frequently, uh, they often are in need of repair. So just from, from basic wear and tear, uh, over, the, over time, they, they have to be repaired at various points as well. And then cross-contamination uh, is, is a big cost driver for reusable bronchoscopes as well. And we'll talk more about uh, why that is and what it looks like. All right, let's take a deeper dive on these, these different cost drivers. So as I mentioned uh, for uh, reusable bronchoscopes, equipment reprocessing repairs and cross-contamination are all major cost drivers. On the equipment side, uh, the scopes and the video towers are, as I mentioned, a significant capital investment. And it's important to keep in mind that oftentimes hospitals need to buy excess scopes to compensate for the time that scopes are out of commission for reprocessing, uh, the time that they're out of commission for, for being repaired. And uh, we found over time the hospitals often underestimate uh, the number of scopes they need, uh, given the fact that at any given point in time, different scopes are gonna be uh, unavailable for use. So equipment costs, uh, a big cost driver. Um, and then on the reprocessing side, I don't think um, folks always realize how complex reprocessing a reusable bronchoscope is. Uh, it involves over 100 individual steps. Uh, each of those steps has costs associated with it, and we'll take a look at what that cost estimate looks like in a moment. Uh, it's also important here to remember that uh, guidelines for reprocessing are becoming uh, stricter, more intensive over time. Uh, and that's, a, that's also a cost driver if you're moving from, let's say, single high-level disinfection to double high-level disinfection or even to sterilization. Um, as you get uh, into more advanced reprocessing methods, the costs go up. Uh, and COVID-19 is playing into that. Um, you've already seen some of the guidelines start to change, um, moving to suggesting if you're going to do bronchoscopies in patients that have COVID-19, you either need to be sterilizing your reusable bronchoscopes or using single-use bronchoscopes. And uh, we anticipate that uh, in, uh, as we move past the, the crisis uh, mode of, of COVID-19 and government agencies, uh, manufacturers, uh, others who have guidelines out there uh, may revisit them and uh, make those reprocessing recommendations uh, even more uh, intensive. So uh, that will continue to be a significant cost driver. Uh, repairs, as I mentioned, uh, you know, reusable scopes get worn down after repeated uses. And as reprocessing gets more intensive, um, that creates more wear and tear. They break down more frequently uh, and that leads to more cost for repairs. Uh, and these repairs are very important. Any scratch that's on uh, a reusable bronchoscope poses an infection risk. So if there's a scratch on the scope, um, bacteria and biofilm get into that scratch and may not be 
um, captured or disinfected in their processing cycle. So uh, scratches uh, and other types of um, you know, issues with bronchoscopes uh, need to be addressed. So those are all the direct um, costs associated with using reusable bronchoscopes. Uh, Cross-contamination is an indirect cost. So uh, it's not as if a hospital has to spend the money up front to, um, to deal with this issue. It's, it's an issue on the back end. Uh, and it's not necessarily something that the hospital who does a bronchoscopy is going to be responsible for, but it's a cost to the healthcare system. And it's a cost that is a part of reusable bronchoscopes. Uh, we're never going to get to a place where all cross-contamination and the, the costs associated with treating infections that result from cross-contamination are going to be eliminated. So it's important to, to consider this category of cost as well. Uh, and uh, these, uh, the infections that patients may end up with uh, from a contaminated bronchoscope um, can be quite serious and, and expensive to treat. Uh, so um, Ventilator associated pneumonia uh, and sepsis are the two most common infections. And uh, as you might imagine, they are expensive uh, to treat um, for, for whoever is treating that patient, but also um, it can be expensive for the patients themselves having to pay out of pocket for copays and deductibles associated with getting that treatment. Uh, COVID-19 transmission is also a concern. Uh, you've heard a little bit about this in the previous webinars uh, as part of this educational series. Uh, there are recommendations now, as I mentioned, to um, try to mitigate COVID-19 transmission risk by doing sterilization or moving to single-use bronchoscopes. Uh, so there's a patient-to-patient -patient risk, but also a patient-to-staff risk as staff are reprocessing bronchoscopes. So these are the cost drivers uh, on the reusable side. And uh, so now I want to uh, walk through these and add some actual dollar figures to these different categories. What is the true cost of using a reusable bronchoscope? So this is uh, an estimate of the cost associated with the equipment. So the bronchoscope and the video tower. Uh, you see here uh, for the bronchoscopes, uh, for video and HD bronchoscopes, a range of $25,000 to $40,000. Uh, for fiber optic bronchoscopes, the range can look like $9,000 to $15,000. Uh, the video tower has uh, different components uh, that are part of the total cost, the video processor, the light source, the image recorder. And so uh, these numbers come from various studies and come from the prices that are often quoted for these uh, different types of equipment. Uh, and, and then to get to the average cost per procedure of $126, uh, we took the, the purchase price and spread that cost across the lifetime of the scope or the tower, uh, which we've estimated to be about five years. Uh, and then you also have to take into account the procedure volume in that facility. Uh, that's a really key factor here. Uh, we've used uh, published data to estimate what a typical procedure volume for, for one bronchoscope looks like over the course of a year and use that to get to this $126 per procedure. Uh, so as you might imagine, um, based off of that, uh, there can be a lot of variation in the, in the per procedure cost across different hospitals and different providers. Uh, so um, it's really going to vary a lot with the procedure volume. An efficient hospital who uh, has a high volume and, and that is uh, basically um, doing a bronchoscopy, reprocessing it and then quickly using it in another patient. So there's not a lot of uh, wasted time. Um, they're gonna have a lower per procedure cost, but $126 uh, per procedure is, is a pretty good estimate based on national averages. So that's the per procedure cost of equipment. Let's look at the per procedure cost of reprocessing. As I mentioned before, there are over 100 individual steps uh, for doing high level disinfection. Uh, this graphic actually oversimplifies things a bit. Uh, each of these components on the graphic has multiple steps associated with it. And each of these steps has a cost. And uh, I'll show you those costs in just a moment. Uh, the total we arrived at for the per procedure costs for reprocessing is $101. And this number and the individual uh, dollar amounts for the reprocessing steps are derived from a study by Corey Ofsted. Uh, 
she went into different facilities and looked at all of these supply costs, look at the, the staff time and hourly rates of those staff, all of the different pieces of cost associated with these reprocessing steps uh, were pulled together to get to this estimate. And notably for, uh, for COVID-19, uh, PPE is, uh, is a cost uh, associated with reprocessing. Uh, the personnel that are involved in reprocessing need to use uh, two sets of PPE each uh, to get through an entire reprocessing cycle. And as you can imagine, um, that adds up over time and also is, is an issue just in terms of the, the shortage of PPE uh, that's currently um, happening in our healthcare system. You see here the other reprocessing steps and the costs associated with it. Uh, bedside pre-cleaning, um, just under $12, leak testing, manual cleaning, uh, all have uh, associated costs. And then uh, one, one note here about uh, visual inspection, cleaning verification, and recleaning. So when um, a scope is making its way through this reprocessing cycle and uh, someone does a visual inspection and sees that uh, there's an issue with the cleanliness of the scope, it may have to go back through some of this, the steps in this cycle. Also, when uh, when bronchoscopes have been reprocessed and then are in drying and storage for a long period of time, in some cases, they need to go all the way back through the reprocessing cycle uh, to make sure that they are properly disinfected. So um, lots of costs here. Uh, and again, the total per procedure uh, is uh, just over $101. But again, uh, I'll, I'll point out for this and all the other categories, this is going to vary significantly by, uh, by facility based on the type of reprocessing method they do, uh, based on um, you know, the, the purchase price of their uh, sterilizer, if they have one, all of those types of things. All right, let's look at the cost of repairs. Uh, based on studies of 16 different hospitals, the average cost to repair a reusable bronchoscope is estimated at $3,380. Uh, and so we uh, we use that data uh, from the studies that were conducted and bumped that up against the, the data on the average volume per scope uh, to get to uh, an overall estimate of the average cost of repairs at $99. Um, similar theme here, a lot of variation across facilities. Uh, and one thing that we've seen over time is there's often a lack of transparency. Uh, for not only for cost of repairs, but also for reprocessing, uh, being able to identify you know, what all the individual costs are. Uh, and on the repair side, um, you know, if, if a hospital has a repair contract, uh, it can be unclear you know, what their true risk of breaks is, uh, what the true cost of the repair is. And so uh, sometimes repair contracts can be maybe uh, a little bit um, more expensive than a hospital would pay if they were, were uh, repairing pairing each one individually when a break occurs. Uh, so sometimes a lack of transparency there um, that not only applies here, but applies to some of the other categories. All right, let's look at the fourth category, cross-contamination. And the, the data that is presented on this slide comes from a uh, systematic review that was published earlier this year in the journal Anesthesia. And that systematic review looked at studies, uh, at 16 different studies that have been published previously. And so uh, because it's a systematic review, because it's pulling together data from 16 different studies, uh, I would say that this data carries a lot of weight. Uh, it's, it's basically a way to look at all of the research that's been uh, conducted to date on, on this topic. And the systematic review found uh, that uh, the infection rate from reusable bronchoscopes is at 2.8%. Uh, so that's the uh, percent of patients who will get an infection after having a bronchoscopy with a reusable bronchoscope. And that equates to about one in 36 patients will acquire an infection, uh, which is a, a pretty high number, uh, I think probably higher than most people realize. Uh, this study also, in addition to uh, calculating the infection rate, also calculated the average cost of treating an infection. And they included in that calculation uh, ventilator-associated pneumonia, uh, community-acquired pneumonia, and sepsis, uh, and weighted uh, the, the estimate here based on the prevalence of those three different infections. Uh, 
to get to an average cost of treating an infection of $11,788. Now we think this is probably a conservative estimate. Uh, I've seen data on the cost of treating um, ventilator associated pneumonia being considerably higher than this in, in the $40,000, $50,000 range. A sepsis can be very expensive as well. Uh, so this is probably a, a conservative estimate. Um, but with these figures, we get to a, a projected infection treatment cost of $330 per procedure. So what does this all add up to? Uh, if you add together the equipment costs, the repair costs, and the reprocessing costs, uh, that's $326 uh, as the average direct cost per procedure for reusable bronchoscopes. And then when you add in the additional costs associated with treating the infections that result from contaminated uh, bronchoscopes, the total cost uh, jumps up to $656. And one thing to keep in mind here is this is based on uh, the high level disinfection uh, method of reprocessing. As I mentioned before, uh, guidelines over time are moving to more advanced uh, recommendations on the type of reprocessing that should be done. And uh, if a hospital switches from high-level disinfection to sterilization, uh, studies have shown that the, the cost will go up. And so this is data from uh, a presentation at the uh, Endoscopy Suite Infection Control Symposium on what, is it, what does it look like in terms of costs to switch to sterilization. Uh, the equipment costs uh, go up considerably, up to $263 when you take into account the, uh, the sterilization equipments, the um, having to replace bronchoscopes more often um, makes that cost go up. Reprocessing uh, obviously uh, is going to go up as more staff time may be required, more supplies, um, and, and those types of, of costs um, add up to $239 sterilization. Uh, in this study, they didn't quantify the repair costs, but those are likely to increase as well. Uh, when you take into account, uh, as I was saying earlier, more intensive reprocessing methods tend to create more wear and tear on the bronchoscope, and that can lead to more frequent repairs. Now, the point of, of switching to sterilization is to try to address cross-contamination. And so uh, you would expect that the costs associated with treating infections would go down. Um, however, I will say that there, there are studies out there that, that basically say it's impossible to, to eliminate cross-contamination, even if you move to sterilization, uh, and that the infection rates may not be that uh, different uh, from switching to sterilization. So I've highlighted the four main uh, cost driver categories, uh, but there are some additional uh, reusable cost drivers that are important to keep in mind. Um, we haven't quantified these. Uh, they're in some cases a little bit difficult to quantify, but uh, they are uh, important costs to keep in mind. Uh, the first set of these is associated with uh, reprocessing and some of the, um, the consequences or, or some of the needs associated with implementing uh, different reprocessing methods. So uh, one thing that can happen um, is availability issues leading to delayed or canceled procedures. So if a, a hospital is, is trying to um, do a procedure, uh, they, there's a need to do a bronchoscopy uh, and there's not an available scope that can lead to that procedure being delayed or, or canceled. And uh, obviously there are costs associated with that um, that can also extend potentially a patient's uh, length of stay. Uh, they may have to come back. So it also creates some burdens on, on the patient in addition to being a cost driver. There's also a need for training and education. Uh, as I mentioned, these reprocessing methods are pretty intensive, pretty complicated uh, with over hundred steps. And so uh, constantly doing training on uh, what the steps are, um, the, the proper way to, 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 to do each step uh, is critically important. And so that means doing initial training for new employees and also doing continuing education as well um, as these recommendations and guidelines and, and instructions for use change over time that requires 
hospitals to, to do additional education as well. Um, transportation costs um, are, are also important to think about here. Uh, and the earlier estimate of the reprocessing costs, uh, we accounted for for some transportation costs, but they can they can also be higher um, for hospitals, for instance, that maybe have a large operation in a certain region and have a centralized uh, location where they do central reprocessing, uh, and that may require um, actually you know putting the the scopes in some sort of vehicle to transport them to that central reprocessing, and so that adds to the, to the reprocessing costs. Uh, one other issue that, that we've seen uh, is uh, overtime uh, uh, labor costs for, for late night and weekend labor. So if a bronchoscopy is done uh, late in the day or um, you know, done in the ICU over a weekend, whatever the case is, uh, you know, that, that bronchoscope needs to be uh, reprocessed immediately, ideally, and so, having uh, a, a member of the um, central sterilization team or whoever's doing the, the reprocessing stay after hours can create additional labor costs. So those are the additional uh, cost drivers related to reprocessing. Also wanted to highlight uh, a few different uh, risk related expenses. So with the, you know, the relatively high infection rate of 2.8% uh, for bronchoscopy, uh, that creates other expenses related to related to that infection risk. Uh, so many hospitals will implement a, a compliance program, uh, implement a program to track changes to, to different reprocessing guidelines. Uh, there's also costs associated with uh, joint commission uh, accreditation and the, the components of that related to uh, reprocessing endoscopes. All of those things have a cost associated with them. Uh, and then uh, there's also uh, you know, the potential for liability issues of the need for malpractice insurance related to uh, the infection risk as well. Uh, that can be a significant cost driver. And then uh, when outbreaks happen, and they do happen, uh, and often make their way into the news, uh, that can have a pretty significant uh, impact on uh, the, the hospital's reputation. And so, um, you know, that, that's a hard to quantify cost driver, and it's, it's a rare one um, for, for these things to become publicized, uh, but it can have a pretty significant impact as well. So those are just some additional cost drivers to, to think about uh, for reusables. So how do these costs for reusable bronchoscopes compare to, to single use? So on the left of your screen, you see those different costs that I just walked through stacked together to show you that total cost. Again, the, the total cost with cross-contamination is $656. Uh, the direct cost uh, of just the equipment reprocessing and repairs is at $326. And so this compares to uh, single-use bronchoscopes, uh, typically costing around $300. You know, that's gonna vary based on um, the, the hospital, uh, but uh, around $300. So you see uh, a favorable cost comparison uh, favoring single-use bronchoscopes. But as I mentioned a couple times, you know, it's important to realize that uh, this is always going to vary by hospital based on uh, their volume, based on how many bronchoscopes they have, what they pay for those bronchoscopes, what type of reprocessing they do. Uh, all of those different factors really drive what the costs are going to be for an individual hospital. And so uh, we recommend doing a customized comparative cost analysis to really understand what the cost comparison looks like for any individual facility. And uh, AMBU has a uh, cost comparison tool. Uh, that tool, uh, you see a, uh, an image of it on the left. Uh, it's available at bedsidebronchoscopy.com. Uh, it's a free tool and we'll provide uh, an analysis that's customized based on those facility specific factors. All right, so given all of that, given these different costs of reusables, given the cost comparison uh, to single use, what value does single use bronchoscopy bring in this current environment? 
And I think it's important to uh, to take a step back and, and think about well, what does value really mean? It's really uh, outcomes over costs. So what are the patient outcomes you're getting uh, at what cost? And so to improve value, you can either uh, improve outcomes, um, lower costs, or both. And uh, based on um, you know, the information that I've walked through, based on the, the research that's out there, I think uh, it's, it's very fair to say that um, single use does bring value by uh, both improving costs, I'm sorry, improving outcomes and lowering costs. So as I showed the, the cost comparison earlier, uh, single use is the cost effective option. It has a, a lower cost per use for most hospitals. And one other piece to this um, that I sort of alluded to in talking about the, the capital versus supplies issue and some of the, the transparency issues around repairs and reprocessing costs. Uh, the costs of single use bronchoscopes are predictable, transparent, and they also are variable with procedure volume. Uh, and so um, for that reason, the financial risk associated with single use is, uh, is potentially lower than what you see for reusables. One thing that we've heard uh, from, from hospitals uh, in, COVID, in this COVID-19 period is that uh, they have a hard time keeping track of the costs associated with reusable bronchoscopes. Um, there are those um, transparency issues that I mentioned. It's hard to tease apart the costs that are associated with central reprocessing, for instance, and especially when they're reprocessing other scopes and other types of equipment. And also uh, the, the capital expenses are sitting on that balance sheet. Uh, and, and so um, those become uh, costs that are not variable with the utilization um, that's occurring. And so if utilization drops, um, the cost structure for, for having reusable bronchoscopes doesn't really change. But for single use, those, uh, those costs are variable with utilization. So that has the benefit of reducing financial risk. We've talked about the, the infection risk and you know, the real value in terms of patient outcomes that single use brings is eliminating the infection risk associated with reprocessing and reuse. Um, that 2.8% of patients getting an infection, uh, that, that essentially goes away uh, and moving to single use bronchoscopy. Um, the next one, reduced exposure related to infection risk. So, I mentioned those, uh, those other cost drivers that are associated with infection risk in an indirect way. So liability, um, malpractice insurance, and those reputational risks, which although rare, uh, can be quite significant for a hospital. And then as we talked about, uh, availability issues can lead to delays for reusables. Uh, that issue goes away uh, with single use. Um, there will, you know, you can pull the, the bronchoscope right out of the package and use it immediately. So no issues in terms of procedure delays. So, you know, in terms of COVID-19, I would say, you know, in this uh, uncertain era that we're in um, with lots of concerns about uh, patient safety and infection risk, lots of concern about cost, uh, single use bronchoscopy, I think, brings a lot of value in, in this period that we're in. Uh, hospitals and providers are, are looking for solutions to address infection risk. As mentioned before, there is some data showing that reusable bronchoscopy presents uh, risks in terms of COVID-19 transmission to patients and also to hospital staff. And they're also looking to trim budgets. Uh, and so while it may seem like switching technologies can be a significant cost in itself, um, because single-use costs are lower on a per-use basis, uh, typically, as well as predictable and transparent uh, and variable with utilization, uh, it, it can be a good solution in this, this time of uncertainty uh, and, and bring significant value for hospitals. All right, so made it to the end of the slides I wanted to present. Uh, so we can now uh, open it up to some questions. Yeah, that sounds good. Thank you very much for us at this time. Let's go ahead and uh, if you have any questions, post them in the Q&A function located at the bottom center of your computer screen. And we'll answer all these questions. So the first one, Russ, that came up was, what governing body is responsible for the reprocessing guidelines? And in your research, have you come across recommendations for biotesting after cleaning 
to ensure the process is working and the scopes are clean? Yeah, that's a great question. So a couple different uh, components here. Um, the instructions for use that are associated with the reusable bronchoscopes will have recommended uh, reprocessing steps associated with them. So that's you know always uh, where to look first, I think, in terms of, of the guidelines. Uh, federal agencies also put out guidelines. Uh, so the CDC has, has guidelines on reprocessing. Uh, the FDA has made various comments on reprocessing methods in the past as well. Uh, and so, um, you know, different places to look, uh, even the, um, the specialty societies uh, publish guidelines that are uh, influential as well, uh, especially uh, in COVID-19, uh, some of the different um, national and international um, societies uh, of physicians that do bronchoscopies have been issuing guidelines as well uh, related to best practices for reprocessing uh, bronchoscopes uh, in this uh, during this pandemic. So a lot of different types of organizations. Uh, I think you know that's one of the challenges for for a hospital is tracking all of those recommendations, tracking where the science is, uh, and then you know making the changes they need to make uh, in their facility to to meet those. Uh, and so I see the second part of the question here: um, Have you come across recommendations for biotesting after cleaning to ensure the process is working and the scopes are clean? That is an emerging uh, theme in the recommendations is doing um, you know, di doing different types of surveillance, uh, doing culturing of, of different endoscopes uh, to, to verify that they are in fact clean after the reprocessing method. Uh, you're seeing that a lot uh, for the reprocessing of duodenoscopes um, and that's starting to also be, uh, be a factor and be recommended um, more so uh, for other endoscopes as well. So, I would imagine over time, you're going to see more of those, uh, those recommendations for bronchoscopy. Okay. Uh, the next question, how would you address a facility that states they don't have a cross-contamination issue and, and the cost of PPE for reprocessing is minimal? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so um, we often hear this from facilities that, oh, we've never had an infection or we don't have a cross-contamination issue. And uh, just because they're not aware of it doesn't mean that it hasn't happened. And you know, they may not always know when a patient gets, um, gets pneumonia or sepsis after their procedure and, and maybe goes to a different facility. Uh, or if it hasn't happened in their facility, it doesn't mean that it can't happen um, you know, tomorrow or next week or, or, or sometime in the short term. So um, the risk is real. You know, there are plenty of studies that, that, that validate those numbers that we looked at, 2.8% um, infection rate. Uh, so um, just because they don't uh, think they have a, an issue uh, doesn't mean that it's never been an issue for them. Uh, and similarly, on, on the cost of um, PPE, um, I saw that as part of the second part of the question here. Um, PPE itself is not necessarily a huge cost. Uh, PPE is fairly inexpensive. Um, but you have to consider all of those other supply costs, all of those other parts of the reprocessing cycle that, that are cost drivers. And so it's one, it's one piece of a much larger uh, set of costs. Uh, so, um, you know, that's, that's important to keep in mind as well. Okay, this one, maybe you, you have some data on this, but uh, due to restrictions from COVID, are physicians behind in procedures? So are patients waiting to have a routine follow-up bronch? Yeah, we've heard uh, a little of this anecdotally. Uh, I, I don't have any data to really back it up. Um, certainly in, uh, in other areas of endoscopy that are more tied to um, elective procedures, or procedures that can be postponed uh, have have seen that, uh, you know, in bronchoscopy that's not all that's not necessarily the case, uh, and so, um, you know, I would imagine it's it's sort of a mixed uh, answer here. On in some cases, uh, things have been um, maybe postponed, but um, in a more emergency situations, obviously you can't you can't postpone a procedure. So. Um, I bet there, I would imagine there is some sort of pent up demand out there uh, and uh, that will play out over the coming months. Okay, uh, there's a, another question. With, with uh, scopes being disposable, uh, do you see the cost of disposable scopes going down? <laughs> 
Um, that's a good question. Um, you know, potentially, um, you know, as um, as the market becomes more mature, um, and you know, like anything else, uh, as something gets into wider use, sometimes the cost can go down. Um, you know, for for a hospital that's um, maybe doing half single use now and uh, moves to full uh, full single use, completely replacing reusables, um, potentially the the costs could go down. But that's um, you know, that's going to be a case by case basis. Okay. Uh, another question. What do you wish the general public knew about the costs of reusable versus single use scopes? You know, I think, uh, for me, what I wish the general public knew is that, um, infection rates are, are higher than they probably expect. And, and that goes across different areas of endoscopy. Um, yeah, I don't think the general public really understands that when they have, uh, a bronch done that there is a risk to them, uh, not only of infection, but also the costs associated with that. As I mentioned before, uh, if, a, if a patient gets sepsis and has to go to, into the hospital and, and has a length of stay for a few days there uh, and different procedures done, they're going to have a pretty steep uh, hospital bill. Uh, and, you know, depending on their insurance, uh, potentially some significant um, out of pocket expense associated with that. And I don't think that the people fully uh, appreciate that. Okay. Uh, the next question. So this is about the mechanics of some of the calculations. In comparing costs per procedure for a facility that has already purchased reusables, wouldn't we need to remove the capital purchase costs since they will have spent that regardless and will continue to be part of their cost per procedure, even if switching to disposable? Yeah, this is something we hear a lot. Um, and I think, you know, uh, I understand where that, uh, that sentiment comes from. Uh, you know, we've already, we've already bought these scopes. Uh, it's a cost that we've already essentially accounted for. But I think, you know, it's important to think about these costs moving forward. And, uh, and eventually any scope is going to reach its end of life. Uh, any uh, video tower is going to reach its end of life. Uh, and so, um, by switching to single use, you're, you're, you know, uh, at that point, um, you know, you've, you've essentially replaced the, the technology and accounted for all those costs at that point. Um, and also, you know, if let's say a hospital, um, you know, decides they want to, uh, partially switch to single use, uh, those, as I mentioned before, those capital costs, uh, and other costs that they have are, are largely fixed for reusables. And so, uh, you know, they're, um, that's going to mean that their, uh, their per procedure costs may actually go up uh, for reusables uh, based on the way we've structured our model. And we think, we think it's the right way for hospitals to think about the cost because uh, you need to really account for, uh, for every piece of the cost associated with, uh, you know, with your bronchoscopy. And so, um, you know, get the points, but uh, it's important to think about all of these different costs and uh, and make sure that, you know, hospitals are aware of uh, all the various costs that, that go into their to their bronchoscopies. Okay. Uh, this one actually came to me via text. Do you see significant variation within hospitals affiliated with the same healthcare system? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, I think you, you definitely can. Um, you know, I think uh, all health systems are a little different. Some of them are, are more top down and, and try to uh, align across hospitals. Uh, and may have, you know, like I mentioned before, one central reprocessing facility that they send all of their scopes to. And so for those systems, it, it may not be that different, um, but, you know, definitely have seen systems where, um, you know, operations are still you know, done at the local level, uh, at the hospital level. And so, some may be doing single HLDs, some may have a sterilizer and desterilization. Uh, and so, um, you know, I think, I think there's a lot of variation um, and you can't really, I think, make a sort of a, an assumption about what it's gonna look like uh, across a health system. Okay, good. And this is the last question uh, that I see in the Q&A area. So uh, I myself have reprocessed GI scopes and bronchoscopes. It is an intricate process with no actual QA indicators that the scopes are sterile post reprocessing. Are there specific reasons why the regulatory bodies are not pushing for single use scopes for endoscopic procedures despite COVID-19? 
Yeah, that's a great question. And it's, it's one that I've, uh, I've wondered myself. Uh, I think, uh, you know, we have seen regulatory bodies pushing for uh, disposable uh, endoscopes uh, within, um, within uh, duodenoscopes for ERCP procedures. Uh, so there is precedence there uh, from, from the FDA and from other government agencies to make those kinds of recommendations and requirements. Um, I think for, for now, you know, related to COVID-19, uh, you know, if I had to venture, I guess, I would say that uh, the, the different federal agencies are just completely overwhelmed with all of the, the activity and all of the, uh, all of the steps they're taking to respond to the pandemic. And this probably isn't at the top of their priority list. Uh, so even though it hasn't happened to date, uh, once things start to calm down a little bit, uh, I could, I could definitely see uh, whether it's CDC or FDA or, or even CMS, uh, putting some policy or some recommendation out there to, to, uh, to push towards single-use bronchoscopes. So I think it's, uh, uh, it's something that we can, uh, we can see how it plays out uh, over the coming months. Okay. Well, great. Thank you, Russ, uh, for your insightful presentation. I, I'm confident that each of us can take valuable information from this program back to our own facilities. So we appreciate you sharing your expertise with us today. Uh, we hope that you all have enjoyed today's webinar program. As mentioned at the beginning, this webinar was the last of a four-part educational series. Uh, the previous three webinars are available for streaming on YouTube and ambuusa.com. Thank you all for taking the time to attend this webinar. It, it will be available for replay online in a few days. This concludes today's program and I wish everyone a pleasant evening.